Hello and welcome to this video. This video title is Obtaining Digital Certificates in Cisco's iOS. My name is Keith Bogart and I will be your instructor for this video series. In this video we're going to go through several things. We're going to look at what are the prerequisites for creating digital certificates, otherwise known as identity certificates, within Cisco iOS. We'll talk about the concept of a PKI trust point and what that is. We'll go into the details of the subject name, which is a, a required field within an identity certificate and how that has to be constructed. We'll look at how you configure the, the Cisco iOS device to know where the trust point is, how to reach it, how to authenticate with it, and how to enroll with it. Then we'll look at how to download the, the certificate authority's root certificate how to enroll with the trust point, otherwise known as the certificate authority, and then how to verify that all of this has worked. All right, so let's get right into it. So prior to your Cisco iOS device, which could be a router or a switch, or it could even be a firewall, although firewalls don't technically run Cisco iOS, some basic preliminary stuff has to be configured and functioning and ready to go first before we can talk to the certificate authority and ask them for a digital certificate. So number one, your device has to have an RSA key pair. You need to create that. In this video, I'm not going to go into the details of what RSA key pairs are or how you create them. If you're not familiar with that, look on INE's website. I'm sure we have another video that goes into the details of how to accomplish that. You need to ensure IP reachability. If you can't get to the CA server via IP, you're done. Nothing else you can do. So make sure your routing's in place and that you have a route to reach that certificate authority. Then you'll go ahead and configure the trust point. Remember, a trust point is another name for a certificate authority. You will authenticate against the trust point. Now, during the process of authentication is where you're actually reaching out to the certificate authority and saying, hey, I need your certificate. If I'm going to trust you and if I'm going to tell everybody else that they need to trust you, I need to get your identity certificate, Mr. or Mrs. Certificate Authority, and then you download the self-signed certificate of the root CA or the certificate authority. So that's the authentication stage. Once you've got that, now it's time for you to enroll with that trust point. So this is where you're technically what's called is you're submitting a certificate, certificate signing request. Certificate signing request is a special message that says, hey, I would like an identity certificate. Here's my public key. Here's my subject name. Here's some other information about myself. Can you please take all this, verify me, and then give me a digital certificate with your fingerprint on it, issued by you. So that's where we have to enroll. And then optional but highly recommended is that you synchronize time using the network time protocol or any other time protocol that you want. Because once again, remember that digital certificates are time-based. They have a definitive start time and they have a definitive expiration date. Usually it's about two or three years that a certificate is good for, but that can change depending on what you've agreed to with the certificate authority, what their defaults are. And so your time and the certificate authority's time has to be in sync so that not only are you both aware of when your identity certificate is about to expire, but you're also both aware of when the root CA's certificate is about to expire. So let's talk about a little bit more about trust points now. So a trust point is another term. It's a Cisco IOS term for the certificate authority. Who's going to be giving you your digital certificate? So you have to go into your, I'm going to be just using a router here as my PKI client. Remember a PKI client is another term for the device that wants the certificate, that is requesting a certificate. So I'm going to use a router as my PKI client. I'm also going to be using a router as my PKI server as well. So my PKI client has to have some configuration commands to point to that guy and know how to reach him. And then the certificate signing request will be sent and that is called enrolling the certificate. And the process of enrolling can either be done manually. I'll show you there's a command you can do that actually kickstarts the enrolling process 
or if you use the auto-enroll command, and that will be coming up towards the end of this presentation, like it sounds, that will automatically enroll with the CA. We'll get to that. All right, so if I'm going to configure the trust point within iOS at minimum, I need to specify the RSA key pair to enroll. So I'm assuming that I've already created my RSA key pair, my public and private key that's already done. I've already generated that and I've given it some name, ideally some name that's, that's easy to memorize, like Bob key or Cisco key or something that's easy to memorize. Because now, when I configure my trust point configuration, part of that configuration is going to be pointing to that key pair. Because remember, you could potentially have several keys. I'm not sure why you would do that. Actually, I can think of some reasons, but you could have multiple key pairs. So when I'm enrolling with a particular trust point, I need to know which key pair I'm going to use. So I send the appropriate public key to that trust point. I have to also have to specify my enrollment method. In other words, what protocol, what language am I going to use to speak to that certificate authority to do all this process of authenticating him and enrolling him? Typically, we use HTTP. And if you specify HTTP, what that means is that HTTP is your transport mechanism. But within the body of the HTTP, you're actually using the SCEP protocol, which is the Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol. And there are many other optional items that could be included. So let's take a look at a basic configuration right here. So in our trust point configuration, we can see uh, we've given our trust point a name, in this case, CSR1. Now, that can be any name. That's just a, a descriptive name. You can name it anything you want. It's not really all that relevant. Just make it something that's meaningful to you. The thing that is important is this RSA key pair command. So I'm assuming here that you've already created an RSA key pair and when you created it, you used the label keyword and you labeled it as router2-key. Once again, you could name your RSA key pair whatever you want, but whatever name you gave it is what you need to refer to right here. Then we have enrollment. So this is saying, okay, how am I gonna find this certificate authority that's called CSR1? Where is he? How do I reach out to him? So in this case, I'm saying I'm using HTTP, which really means I'm going to be using the secure or the simple certificate enrollment protocol, SCEP. And the IP address that he's located at is 172.16.1.11. And then there's one other minimum thing you have to provide. So at minimum, you have to provide the RSA key pair, the enrollment, how you're going to reach him, where he is, and then you also have to provide a subject name. So, Because remember, when that certificate authority creates an identity certificate, he's going to give his name as the issuer, and then he's going to put a subject name in there which refers to you. So when you hand out this digital certificate to people, the subject name is very important. Now notice here with the subject name, you can't just type whatever you want. For example, I just typed the name Keith here, and it says, this is not a valid subject name. It must be an X.500 LDAP format. So the subject name really needs to take a particular format, for example, this. Now, in the event that you've never seen this before and you're thinking, what the heck is all that? C-N-O-U-O, -O, what's that? Okay, well, let's go on to the next slide and let me talk a little bit about the subject name. So remember, the subject name is an X.500 LDAP format. It's a required component of a, this says digital signature, it actually should be digital certificate. By default, iOS devices populate their field, this field with their host name, but you probably don't want it populated with the host name. You probably want to give it something a little bit more meaningful to you. So let's look at what the X.500 distinguished names format is. So at a minimum, your subject name needs to contain a common name. And that's just defined as CN, a capital CN, an equal sign, and then whatever you want. Usually it's, it's a name, a dot, and then a domain name, like payroll1.ine.com. So a, a valid common name would be something like this, CN equals payroll1.ine.com. 
That is a valid format for a common name. So your subject-name keyword within your trust point at minimum has to have this, a common name. Now if you want to, you could go on and add additional things. You could add OU equals and give the organization unit. This could be whatever you want, OU equals payroll, OU equals engineering, O equals organization name. Could be your company's name, large organization. This, this is really up to you how you want to do this. You just need to make sure you have O and equal sign and then whatever. L is locality name. This would be for like your city. L equals Raleigh. L equals Miami. L equals, you know, Boston, whatever your locality is. S equals your state name. And this has to be a, uh, it's a two letter state name like CA for California or NC for North Carolina. And then C equals country. And this is a two letter country code. If you're not familiar with what your two letter country code is, you can Google it. And there's a document that talks about two letter country codes. Now, above and beyond the common name, if you need to supply any of these other things or if you want to, the order is also important. In other words, you can't have CN followed by O, followed by OU, followed by S. That's not gonna work. The order of these has to follow in this order. Okay, so that's the absolute minimum you need to do is to create your, let me just go back again to re rehash that. So once again, you're creating a trust point, giving it whatever name you want, specifying your key pair that you've already created, specifying your enrollment method, which most likely should be HTTP, and the IP address to reach it, and specifying at minimum a subject name using the common name format, and then possibly all this other stuff here if you wanna do that. Now, once you've done that, your PKI client, your router, he's just gonna sit there. He's not gonna do anything. So now we need to do two additional steps. Number one, we need to authenticate that certificate authority, which is basically where we need to get him to send to us his certificate, his digital certificate. And that's what we see here in the next slide. Downloading the CA certificate. So here within global configuration command mode, you would type crypto PKI authenticate and then the name of your trust point. So what's gonna happen in the background is you're gonna send out a, 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 a SCEP request for his certificate. He will download it and then you will see the fingerprints of that certificate. And then what you can do is if you actually have access to the certificate authority, like this second box here on the bottom, CSR1, that is the router I configured as my certificate authority. You can do this other command, show crypto PKI certificates verbose. You'll see his own certificates, and then you compare. Make sure that the fingerprint, either the MD5 and or the SHA-1, both of them need to match. If they don't match, that means you just downloaded a bogus, a incorrect certificate from somebody who's not really your CA. You pointed it at the wrong IP address. So you wanna make sure that these values are the same. That means that your certificate you downloaded from the certificate authority, his certificate is valid. It says, do you accept the certificate? And you will say, yes. Trust point C certificate accepted. Now at this point, router two has not yet obtained an identity certificate for himself. He's only, he's only downloaded the root certificate. So the next step and the last step is to get this router to enroll with the certificate authority. Here is manual enrollment. Crypto PKI enroll and the name of the trust point you configured. Now it's gonna ask you for a password. Now let me talk a little bit about this password. If you are actually enrolling with a real certificate authority like VeriSign or DigiCert or Entrust, depending on your agreement with them and what you've set up in advance, they might have configured a password on their side. And if they did, you would need to supply that password right here in this. 
So when it says password and re-enter password, that's the password that they are expecting. Now let's say that you're doing this in a lab environment or maybe not even a lab environment, but you're configuring one of your own routers, your Cisco iOS router, as the root authority, as a certificate authority. Well, by default, Cisco iOS routers configured as root authorities are not expecting any password. As a matter of fact, if you supply, now you have to supply one here, even if you don't want to, you're not gonna be able to get past this point until you supply a password. Now, if the certificate authority happens to be a router and he's not expecting a password, you can type whatever you want in here. You'll send the password to that router. That router will say, oh, interesting, there's a password. Eh, I don't really care about that. Ignore it, move on. Now, however, if you want this password to actually be meaningful, for example, if, if you're in charge of the certificate authority, let's say you're in charge of the router that's operating as a certificate authority, and you say, you know what? I don't want people enrolling with me unless I know who they are. Author only authorized people, only authorized PKI clients should enroll with me. Therefore, I want to create a password on my router, give the password to them, and then that password is what they put in right here. So I'll demonstrate that here in just one moment. Just a couple of additional things I want to point out. Notice that uh, in this process, In this case, the, uh, the subject name is just going to be router-2. It could be that just pulled that. It looks like it just pulled that from the router's host name, most likely because I did not configure a subject-name. It asked me if I want to include the serial number in the certificate. So this is really just between you and the certificate authority. A lot of times people do not include the serial number. Uh, the serial number is typically not used to authenticate a device. So if I give you my digital certificate and there happens to be a serial number in there, typically you would not look at that component of it. You could care less. So most of the time people say no, but you can include it. It won't really hurt anything to include it. Now right here, include an IP address in the subject name. Most of the time you want to leave it to the defaults of no. If you actually include an IP address, then you have to specify one of the interfaces or IP addresses on this router, and then the certificate will be bound to that IP address. And so if you need to change that IP address in the future or something, then the certificate would no longer be valid. So you probably do not want to include an IP address. And then finally, it'll say, request a certificate from the CA? Yes, I want to. And then the background, this is where you will use HTTP, to upload your certificate signing request within the secure or the simple certificate enrollment protocol. So let's actually walk through this. Let me show you an example of this. So what the topology I'm using here is just two routers. I have them connected via switch, but they could have been connected back to back. So the switch is pretty much irrelevant in here. So ignore that. So two routers, um, both on the same subnet, Router one is going to be my PKI client and router two is going to be my PKI server. All right. So the PKI server is already pre-configured. And the only thing I want to do on that is I want to generate a password that I'm going to give to the PKI client. So when the PKI client enrolls, it actually needs to supply the password. Now this is optional. You don't have to do this but I do want to show you how to do it just in case you are curious about how that works. So let's go to router two first. Here's my CA. And the command to get him to generate a password is actually done right here. It's not actually done in the global configuration level. It is done right here. So the command for that is crypto crypto PKI, oh, okay, well, first of all, I need to know what the name of his server is. So show run. Okay, so when I set him up as a server, I gave him just the name of Trust. All right, so that's his name right there, Trust. So Crypto PKI Trust, oop, it is case sensitive, Trust Password. Now, it's going to auto-generate a password for me. I'm not going to type it in here, but I do have to specify 
Uh, crypto PKI server password generate. Oh, I forgot the word server. Crypto PKI server trust password generate. And how long do I want this password to be good for? Well, since I'm just doing this for a demonstration, I'll just have it good for 20 minutes. Now, there it is. There is the password. So I'm going to copy that. Now, let's go over to my client. So step number one, I need to generate an RSA key pair on this client. First of all, let's make sure I don't already have any stuff in here I need to get rid of. Nope, nothing's there. All right, so crypto PKI, crypto PKI key generate RSA. No, crypto, it's not crypto PK, it's just crypto key generate RSA. I'll give it a label, something that I can remember. Let's just say R1-key. And why don't we give it a, um, a modulus of 1024. All right, so it's creating the keys right now. All right, now I need to create my trust point and I need to put that key into the trust point. So crypto PKI trust point R2, because I know router two is my trust point. Here you might put VeriSign or Entrust or, you know, this is just a descriptive name. All right, RSA key pair. It's gonna be the name I just created, R1-key. Enrollment URL, so I'm gonna use HTTP 1.2.1.2. That's where that device lives. And if I could, I could leave out the subject name. If I left it out, the subject name would just be PKI-client1, but I wanna make it something different. So I'll say subject-name, common name equals, how about Keith1, dot ine dot com location is in RTP the state is North Carolina and the country equals the United States okay do show run so there we go this is the minimum configuration I need for my trust point notice it put the revocation check as certificate revocation list, that, that's the default. So all I, sub, all I put in was the enrollment URL, the subject name, and the RSA key pair. Okay, so now I'm done with that. So now exit. First step is to authenticate that CA. In other words, I need to obtain his certificate. So crypto PKI authenticate R2. That's the name of the trust point. All right, now it says, okay, is, did I actually talk to R2? Is that the real R2? Well, let's take a look. Crypto PKI certificates. I need to do show. Show crypto, so many words here. Show crypto PKI certificates verbose. All right, we can see right here. Make sure these two things match with these right here. And sure enough, it looks like it matches to me. So I think that is the authentic real certificate. So yes, I will accept it. Trust point CA certificate accepted. Now I'm going to enroll. I'm gonna say, hey, please give me my own certificate. Crypto PKI enroll R2. Now before I do this, okay. It's gonna prompt me for a password. Let's say that I didn't know what the password was because remember way up, not there, up here, using this command, I create a password temporarily for 20 minutes, which was this. Watch what happens when I don't know that password and I just put any old thing in there. Okay, what do I want my password to be? How about INE12345? INE12345. Now, if I had not done this command here, 
in my CA server, it wouldn't matter what password I use. Any old password would be, would be sufficient. Okay, it says, do I want to include the serial number in the subject name? No, I do not. Do I include the IP address in the subject name? No, I do not. Request a certificate. Yes, go ahead and request it. And right here, certificate enrollment request was rejected because I did not supply the correct password. So let's do that again. Time for that password is almost done. Let's redo it. Crypto PKI enroll. Okay, now this time I'm gonna paste in the password. You're not gonna see it, but when I highlight here in secure CRT and then I just right click in this window, it will paste it in. All right, just pasted it. Right click again and paste it. I do not want the serial number. I do not want the IP address. Yes, I want to request my certificate. Okay, and there we go. Certificate received from certificate authority. And how do I view that certificate? Well, using the same command I did previously, but let's go ahead and do it again. How you view it is show crypto PKI certificates. You could also add the keyword of verbose at the end of that. Let's just see what we do, what we uh, see without verbose. Okay, so here the issuer is trust. That's the common name of my certificate authority. Subject, PKI client one. And here's the common name that I supplied. So this is my own identity certificate. And you can see that in this case, uh, by default, the certificate authority, when it's a Cisco IOS server, it only gave me a one year certificate. It's only good for one year. Here is a certificate of the root himself. We can see the common, the issuer is trust and the subject is trust. And his certificate is good for three years. One more thing I want to show you. So I just, what I just showed you was the process of doing what's called manual enrollment. Now the, there is a downside to manual enrollment. And here's the downside. Yes, it's true. I have a certificate right now. I also have the certificate for the root CA, but that was a one shot deal. So when either one of those certificates expires, either, well, my own will expire first because my own is only good for a year. Once my certificate expires, that's it. I'll have to somehow put that on a calendar or put it on a whiteboard and remember a year from now to go back into this router and re-enroll and get a new identity certificate. Similarly, let's say my identity certificate was active and valid right now, but the root certificate expired. That three year period was, was up. Once again, this was a one shot deal. Once I detect that the root certificate is no longer valid, then my certificate is also no longer gonna be trustworthy or valid. So that's where we might wanna use something called auto enrolling with the CA. So within my PKI trust point configuration, this is an additional optional keyword of auto dash enroll. The number here is 75. This is a number from one to 100. In this case, 75 says, hey, my current identity certificate has a certain lifetime. We know it's a year. When I'm 75% into that year, at that point, I want, to, I want to do the auto enroll. Now, what does auto enroll do? It actually does several things. Number one, as soon as the root CA is authenticated, the router will automatically transmit a certificate signing request. In other words, you might remember we had to do the, the crypto PKI authenticate command, which downloaded the roots certificate. And then we had to do the crypto PKI enroll command. That's called manual enrollment. Well, if I had typed auto enroll, the moment I download the root certificate and I said, yes, I will take it, 
I would have automatically started the enrollment process. I would not have needed to type in that command for enroll. It automatically would have done it. Secondly, the last two bullets are the real big deals here. When either of these certificates is nearing the end of their lifetime, for example, when my identity certificate is 75%, now this is up to you. Remember, I said it's a number between 1 and 100. You could have it at 99% of the life has been expired. We just got a tiny little bit of lifetime left to go. It's up to you. But whatever that percentage is, once you get there, it will automatically re-enroll. It'll send up to the root CA another certificate signing request. Now the default behavior of that, if I did not have this regenerate keyword, let's just say I had auto-enroll 75. Then that, that means that after my certificate is 75% of the way done, its life is 75% of the way over, I would use my existing RSA key pair that I had already configured in here, which we saw in this case is router-4.ine.com, that's the name of the key pair in this example, and I would just use that over and over and over and over again to re-enroll and re-enroll every time I got 75% of the way through. And then once my certificate is fully done, is fully expired, I would roll over to that new certificate I had downloaded just a moment ago. Alternatively, or I should say additionally, you can type in the keyword of regenerate, which regenerates your key pair, which means not only do I auto-enroll for a new certificate, I will create a whole new RSA key pair, a new public key, a new private key. And so now when I auto-enroll each time, I'll have a completely new RSA key pair as well. So that is how auto-enroll works. And here you can see an example of confirming certificate enrollment. In the lower right-hand corner, this is like what we just saw, status available. So this is my current identity certificate. I received it from R1-CA, that's the issuer. My name, my common name is router-4.ine.com. This certificate you can see, uh, in this case, was not good very long. It's only good for about 10 minutes. That was configured for that. So that's available. And you can see here, here's a rollover certificate. So, that, so I've already done the auto-enroll process. So I got about 75% of the way into it, and then I downloaded the certificate in the upper left-hand corner. So the moment the certificate in the lower right-hand corner expires at 14.23.53, notice this, at exactly that same time at 14.23.53, that will be the start time of my rollover certificate and that will become my new identity certificate. So that concludes this video on how to configure Cisco IOS devices to enroll with the certificate authority and obtain an identity certificate. I hope this video was useful to you.